you guys are astute and paying attention, you'll notice this video begins in the dark and ends in the light because I decided to reshoot the intro. This week, what we're going to talk about is our local Connecticut species of snake, of which we have 14. So we're going to break down a little bit about each species, how to identify them. And the main reason I want to do that is this time of year, you see so many people looking for snake IDs and so many experts giving the wrong information. And the wrong information not only could be dangerous to a person, but could be more dangerous to the animal. The sad truth is a lot of people persecute animals thinking they're copperheads or timber rattlesnakes. Even though neither of those animals are dangerous if you leave them alone, people still feel the need to kill them. And then misidentification of our other local species often leads to them being killed in case they're that. And so we want to prevent that. So we're going to break it down. We're going to show you some pictures. All of the pictures in this video are courtesy of my friend Stephen, uh, who actually goes out. Uh, and I'll put a link to his Instagram below, Connecticut Snaking, and he actually goes out and he finds all 14 species of our snakes every year and he has a goal by when he wants to do it and he posts wonderful pictures. So thank you, Stephen, for the pictures in this video and you guys make sure you give him a follow and let's dive in and take a look at our animals. So we're going to open with one of my favorite species and one of the most beautiful snakes we have here and sadly the most persecuted snake we have here and that is the Northern Copperhead. Really, really beautiful animals, very, very shy and secretive. So chances are if you're out in your yard and you see snakes moving around, probably not a copperhead. One, they're typically very nocturnal, and two, they are so secretive and shy they don't want anything to do with activity and people. They're typically denned up in, in rock crevices and places where they are off the beaten path and hidden from activity during the day, and then they can come out at night and do their hunting if they need to. Uh, they're communal denners. They den in the same den every year, so they tend to be in the same basic territory uh, year in and year out. Uh, adults are generally two to three feet in size, and their diet is small rodents, insects, birds, and other reptiles. Uh, they are ambush predators and pit vipers. So when you're looking to identify them, one, typically they're looking to rely on their camouflage. They don't want you to see them. They don't want to give up their location. They know that you're not a prey item. And so the only reason they're going to bite you is if you put them in a position where they have no other choice, where they have to be defensive. These animals are not aggressive. They are only defensive. So if you give them space, they will give you space. Uh, Snakes don't charge up on your deck when you're having a drink and attack you. That's not a thing. They're not aggressive. You come up on them, you startle them, you scare them, they get into a position where they feel they have to be defensive, and then they are. If you don't put them in that position, you're not going to get bit. Almost all bites that occur from venomous snakes are people trying to kill them or people that aren't qualified trying to move them. Don't touch them. You'll be safe. Um, so identification. The head is broader than the neck. Big identification thing. People often mistake water snakes, these other species. No. Copperheads, very broad head to the neck. Um, very, very easy to see. A little bit thicker build. They're going to have that pit between their eye and their nostril. Pit viper. That's what they're using when they're out there at night hunting. Uh, so keep that in mind. Connecticut, they're typically uh, not found east of the Connecticut River. Not impossible, but few and far between. Uh, they're also rarely seen in the northeast or northwest corners of Connecticut, uh, but they are, are most commonly found kind of centralized in the central lowlands and trap rock ridges. They really, really like rocky outcroppings where they can hide from activity. That's where you're most likely to find them if you're looking for them. If you are looking for them, be kind to them. Very important animals in our ecosystem. Not only do they remove rodents, but they remove ticks as well when they remove those rodents. And they are one of our best tick control species. Uh, copperheads, timber rattlesnake, all these snakes that eat rodents. So stop killing them. You're doing yourself a disservice. One of the really cool species that we have here that's really seldom seen is the Eastern Worm Snake. Awesome, awesome snakes. I've only found two in my entire life. Uh, just so cool. Pretty laid back. Don't really bite. I don't even think they could break the skin if they did. Totally harmless. Typically these animals are found underground. Uh, that's, that's where they spend the majority of their life, hunting earthworms, things like that. Uh, they actually look a lot like an earthworm, which you'll see from the pictures here. Um, and they, they range all over, um, you know, from like Southern Mass down to Northern Georgia. Um, they're found throughout Connecticut, except for the extreme Northwest corner. Um, but you'll almost never encounter these snakes unless you're digging in an area where you just happen to dig one up. Totally harmless, not anything to worry about. 
Um, not a lot's actually known about them because they have a very secretive nature. They're very, very shy. Uh, they're not out and about. Um, one of the interesting things is their tail is actually sharp to assist in burrowing and their defense as opposed to biting is it'll actually stick you with their tail. And it doesn't really hurt or anything. It's not going to puncture your skin or anything like that, but it's obviously an odd feeling and, and kind of a cool uh, defense mechanism. Um, so seven to 14 inches in size, very small animals, uh, small flat head for burrowing and really, really small eyes, which I think is one of their most distinguishing features. Um, so check them out, cool snakes. If you get an opportunity ever to find one, feel lucky because not many people do. So one of my favorite species here and a very common species here is our Eastern rat snake. Uh, they're the largest snake in Connecticut. They range all over the state sporadically. Uh, they tend to often be found around people due to our habits attracting their prey, be it rodents and, and things of that nature, bird feeders, uh, all the seeds attract rodents and birds alike. Uh, us not being mindful with our trash, uh, you know, getting rodents in our house. These snakes will follow their prey. Uh, so they tend to be around people, not a threat, mostly docile animals, unless you back them into a corner or bother them. They just want to get away from you like everything else does. Adult size is typically 40 to 70 inches. Some do get over six feet in size. I personally have a pet Eastern rat snake, although mine is a genetic morph, so she looks a little bit different than our animals here. Uh, identification, uh, a little bit, kind of not quite rough scales, but not as smooth as a black racer. Uh, typically around here, they tend to be pretty black in color, very dark, uh, white, white chin. Um, and uh, they're active hunters, they'll eat eggs, mammals, birds, insects, and just about anything. Uh, they can be both diurnal and nocturnal. I've seen them hunting in the day, I've seen them hunting at night. Uh, they really kind of are opportunistic animals by and large, and they're going to do whatever best suits them. Uh, they are essential to controlling rodent populations, one of our best rodent uh, control species we have. Uh, so very, very critical to that. Um, so they have a little bit thinner neck than the racer as far as neck to head ratio. And uh, these guys have a little bit more keeled scales, as I said. So those are kind of some, some ways you can tell them apart. Um, down near the coast, they're usually found from like New Haven, East. Um, and then, like I said, sporadically around the state elsewhere. Really, really cool species. So you're lucky to find one. Another fairly common snake we have here is the Eastern Milk Snake. Uh, another one that often gets misidentified. I don't think they look like anything else. But the crazy thing to me is most Connecticut snakes don't look like each other at all, really. I could see, especially less educated people, being confused between a black rat and a black racer or a ribbon snake and a garter snake, things like that. But when it comes to copperheads, timber rattlers, milk snakes, your, your um, you know, uh, northern water snakes, I don't think any of those snakes really look alike. Uh, but a lot of people seem to. And so the eastern milk snake is often found in and around barns. Uh, they range from southeastern Maine all the way down to Tennessee. Very common in Connecticut, except for New London County. Uh, they're very, very sporadically seen over there. They're small and slender with a narrow head, and they often have a V or Y shape on their heads, on the neck, excuse me, just behind their head. Uh, they have three to five rows of blotches down their back. Um, which is different than copperheads. Copperheads don't have that. So people that confuse these snakes are not really looking, they're just seeing their fear, really. Uh, generally size-wise, 20 to 40 inches long. Um, they're an active, typically nocturnal hunter. They'll eat mammals, other snakes, birds, eggs, slugs, uh, you know, pretty much anything. They're fairly secretive. They're typically pretty docile uh, and their teeth can barely break the skin. So they're not harmless even if they do bite you for some reason. And the only reason they're likely to bite you is once again, you're trying to kill it or you're trying to pick it up and you shouldn't be. Uh, you just leave these animals alone, they're gonna leave you alone. It really is that simple, folks. There's no secret, there's no you know technique you have to have. Leave them be, they'll leave you be. Uh, so that's the Eastern Milk Snake. Now the next snake is one that I haven't seen in Connecticut myself and I would like to. Uh, and that's the Eastern Hognose Snake. And sadly, they're becoming more and more rare. Really, really awesome animals. Uh, that have really cool behaviors uh, and a very different defense mechanism than, than most snakes that you're going to deal with. Uh, so the Eastern Hognose is uh, one of the rarest snakes in the state. They're all over the state, but more centralized to inland areas of moderate elevation. 
uh, 21 to 32 inches in size typically. Uh, and they often travel underground, so they're not seen as often. They'll eat toads, small mammals, salamanders, eggs, birds, insects. Um, and so I was talking about their, their threat display. When you threaten them, they'll actually bluff a bunch and strike wildly. And if you actually focus on their strike and pay attention, they're not even actually trying to hit you. They're just trying to make it look like they're wild and striking so you'll go away. At that point, if you don't go away, they go into a different threat display where they'll actually roll over, they'll, they'll go through this motion of, of drama and basically fake death. And they'll roll over on their back, hang their tongue out of their mouth, and if you try to roll them back over on their stomach, they'll flip back over on their back and stay still and pretend to be dead. You pick them up, they won't move, they just hang there, and they're constantly, the only movement they'll do is try to right themselves so they're upside down uh, because they feel like that's what you're gonna think makes them think you're dead. And, a lot of predators don't want to eat carry-on, and so they'll leave them alone. So a really, really different and unique, uh, you know, reaction to a threat than other animals that are going to try to strike and get away. Uh, they'll actually do that, which is really cool. Um, and they also uh, will let out a really foul odor at that time, so you think they smell like they're dead as well. Um, they're usually diurnal, shy species. All likelihood, you're never going to see a hog nose. Uh, they flatten their neck out also a lot, almost looking like a cobra type thing. We don't have cobras around here. That's a hog nose when you see that. Cool animals. Next up, we have the northern brown snake, which a lot of people know as the decays. And uh, funny story, pretty common snake here in Connecticut. Every year I get probably five to ten people sending me decays for IDs. I've never, ever seen one. Never. I've gone out looking for snakes, never seen a decays. Uh, and I, it's a big running joke with me that I, I better see one this year. I'm gonna be really mad because every year, here's a picture of a snake. I'm like, oh, it's another fucking decays, another fucking decays. Feels like an insult at this point, me being a snake person having never seen one. Um, so they're common, but secretive. Uh, they live Southwestern Maine, all the way into Canada, North Carolina, nine to 15 inches in size. So a smaller animal, diurnal, Fairly active, they eat insects, slugs, worms, snails, fish. Uh, and during the peak of the summer, if it's too hot, they'll actually switch and operate nocturnally. So they'll actually alter their behavior based on the environment. Uh, they don't really like being overheated. So during those real dog days of the summer, they're unlikely to be out during the day and they're more likely to be out at night hunting when it's a little bit cooler. Uh, they don't tend to bite, but they will musk uh, as a last resort and they much prefer to hide when possible. They don't want to be out and about in the center of activity. They don't want to see you. Uh, they just want to be left alone like all these other animals. Next up, another cool species, uh, the Northern Red-Bellied Snake. Uh, these are ones you probably don't see a ton of. They're very secretive, rarely observed. Uh, they like wooded areas, uh, Southern Canada to Northern Florida. So they're, they're spread pretty far down the coast here. Uh, and their, their biggest thing to identify them is they have a red or orange belly and it's very brightly colored, very obvious, doesn't look like anything else we have around here. Uh, they do look a little like ringneck snakes, but ringneck snakes have a different color belly than they do. And uh, also have a few other distinguishing marks. Either way, neither is dangerous to you, just leave them be. Uh, these guys are eight to 11 inches, so not very big animals. Uh, and they have three distinct spots behind their head. Uh, which is different from the ring neck, which has a ring behind its head. And so with some younger animals, the three dots can kind of look like a ring just because of how small they are. Uh, but that is one of the identifications besides the belly color. Uh, they'll eat insects, slugs, worms, beetle larvae. Um, they're active evening or night, typically. Um, they hide most of the time. They almost never try and bite, but will roll their lip up to show their teeth, which is kind of funny considering that you can barely see their teeth because they're so small. Uh, but that's their threat display is to show you, you know, the big bad teeth they don't really have. And they'll also musk as a defensive behavior. Next up, we have the Northern Ringneck Snake, which we were just talking about with the red belly, you know, being fairly similar. Um, these guys go from Canada down to Northern Georgia, extremely docile and secretive. They often end up in people's basements. Uh, probably the most common snake you would end up finding in your house. I actually had one here years ago in my basement. I went down to switch over my laundry and there was a spider web in the corner that a spider had made and the ring neck snake was up in the air off the ground, stuck in the spider's web. That's how 
non-threatening these snakes are that it couldn't even get out of a spider web. I had to get it out and bring it outside. Um, even if they tried to bite, I don't think it's possible for one to break the skin. I've never had one try to bite me. I've had to move probably half a dozen out of my basement over the years and I found them outside other places. Super, super cool snakes. Really, really like bright yellow belly. And, uh, you know, they're, they're typically more nocturnal than anything. The distinctive ring around their neck is really the easiest way to identify them. Very, very smooth scales. And once again, that bright yellow belly. Really, really cool snakes. So absolutely not a threat to you. Cannot hurt you. The hardest thing about them getting in your basement is they're so small, it's hard to scoop them onto your hands to get them outside. You usually need like a sheet of paper and kind of shoo them onto it and put them into something to bring them out. Um, just because you literally, like, you don't want to hurt them. They're so small. They are often thinner than an earthworm. Uh, but 9 to 15 inches. I've never seen one at the top end of that range. Typically, I find babies and juveniles, so there may be, you know, 6 to 8 inches is typically about what I come across for uh, ring necks. All right, this next species, really honestly, is very, very easy to identify. That's the smooth green snake because it looks exactly as its name says. It's a smooth green snake. It's the only one of its type in the area. Can't mistake it for anything else. Uh, its range is spotty, but it's mostly found in Eastern Connecticut. Very, very rare in Western Connecticut. They get 12 to 25 inches, very smooth scale. Their belly is actually white, despite the rest of them being green. Uh, they eat insects and spiders. I'm not a big fan of spiders, so they're okay in my book. All the smooth green snakes I could have, I'd be happy to have here. Let nature do its job. Um, so one of the cool things about these snakes that's different is they can actually incubate their eggs internally or externally based on conditions. And so a lot of snake species either give birth to live young, lay eggs, or there's some species that keep the eggs in their body, the eggs hatch inside, and then they essentially give live birth. But these snakes can actually decide where to incubate their eggs. So they can keep them in their body until they're just about ready to hatch, or they can lay them and incubate them artificially outside of their body. So very, very cool distinguishing thing that they do. Um, also, something that's pretty wild is shortly after death, they change color to a bright, bright blue. Uh, they're shy and they usually take off when people approach. They want absolutely nothing to do with you. Uh, they just want to get the, get the hell away from you, but very, very easy snake to identify. You're not ever going to confuse it with anything else locally here, uh, so no worries there. Now, one of the most common snakes that we see is the common garter snake. Not garden snake, garter, like the belt you take off at the wedding. Um, a lot of people mistake that, that name and call them garden snakes, and they will often be found in and around your garden, uh, but that's not, their, that's not what they are. They're garter snakes. Uh, they're found almost anywhere in Connecticut, huge range all over North America, uh, typically 18 to 26 inches as adults, but they can reach over 40 inches sometimes. I've never seen one that big, but I've seen some that were definitely, definitely well over two feet. Uh, they're typically less phased by human activity. Uh, you'll often find them around your houses, your gardens and, and areas. You'll commonly see them. They move pretty quickly. Um, and, uh, they eat all kinds of stuff, frogs, toads, salamanders, mice, crayfish, millipedes, worms, fish, birds, spiders. They're really opportunistic. Um, they're typically at most active at dawn and dusk. They'll come out in the morning, bask a little bit, come out in the evening, maybe look around, find some food, things like that. Um, but when it's hotter, once again, they're another species that will alter their behavior and hunt more at night than during the day uh, to beat the heat. They have three light stripes down their body that kind of give away their appearance best. Uh, and between the stripe, stripes are rows of, of black spots. Um, and they're kind of not quite keeled scales, but they're pretty rough looking. Um, that'll give you a, a good identification of a garter snake plus those stripes. Um, and they, they tend to be kind of dull and muted in their color sometimes. Um, but you know, once again, leave them alone. They're going to go on their way. Once in a while, these snakes will find their way in your home as well, uh, just because they're so active and, and they're constantly looking around for prey items. Best thing, if you want to avoid having snakes in your house or around your house, don't make it a good place for them to be. You know, if you're afraid of snakes and you don't want them around for some reason, 
Make sure you're not leaving trash and things around to attract rodents and attract insects and allow all these insects, you know, ideal conditions to breed in and around your home. Uh, and then you're less likely to have run-ins with snakes. All right, my favorite, favorite Connecticut species and my favorite species of rattlesnake overall is our timber rattlesnake. And the timber rattlesnake has a long standing history with this country. Um, all of you that have seen the Don't Tread on Me flag, uh, all of you that are history buffs know that Benjamin Franklin was kind of a big fan of them, uh, wanted to use them as a national symbol at one point for a few different things. They are endangered and they are protected. It is illegal to kill these animals, so do not do it. Uh, not only is it an asshole maneuver because there's no reason to and they are so good at what they do, controlling tick populations and keeping rodent populations in check, you are a fool to kill these animals. They are very shy. They do not want confrontation with you. Give them their space, which legally you're required to do. You're not allowed to bother these animals even. Not only are you not allowed to kill them, but you're not supposed to touch them. You're not supposed to move them. Um, leave them be. Protected species, protected for a reason because they're very endangered. Once again, pit vipers, we talked about earlier, these guys have pits as well between their eye and nostril, uh, an unmarked flat triangular head that's much larger than the neck, keeled scales, 36 to 54 inches in size, uh, with 40 to 44 being pretty typical. Um, they're seldom found below 500 feet of elevation. They like a little bit of elevation in their lives. Once again, dead in the same site every year, concentrated to certain territories. These are not snakes you're typically gonna find roaming through your yard or roaming around. Uh, cool thing is, rattlesnakes have a rattle. If you get too close to them, they're gonna rattle. That rattle is not a sign of aggression. That's a, hey, please, I don't want conflict with you. I'm over here, I'm over here, leave me be. That's what that is. They're not rattling to attract food. They are rattling to let you know that they're scared that you're getting too close to them. So if you hear that sound, stop what you're doing, look around, Give them some space, let them go on their way, or you go the opposite direction. Also, if you do see a timber rattlesnake being communal denners, that probably means there's others around. So if you're hiking, you're out in the woods, you're out on a trail, whatever it is, and they're around, start paying more attention, be more weary, watch where you're reaching and grabbing things. Uh, if you're reaching down into rock beds and things like that, pay attention. Where there's one, there's usually more at some point in time. So give them that space and uh, you guys will have no problems. Um, so they are actually docile, very shy. Uh, they don't wanna be defensive. So I think we've covered all that. They'll eat mice, small mammals, birds, um, and they take a long, long time to reach sexual maturity. Uh, so that's why it's a big deal when people kill them and that's why they're endangered. It's so hard for them to rebound compared to other animals. A lot of other animals are breeding age in two, three, four years. These guys take a long time. Uh, so people wiping out a den or wiping out breeding animals really, really hurts the population. So leave our timber rattlesnakes alone. Not only is it the law, but it's the right thing. Next up, we have the Northern Water Snake. This one gets a lot of misidentifications. My favorite is people that say it's a water moccasin because it's in the water. Let me hit you with a little knowledge here. Water moccasins, the furthest north they occur is Southern Virginia. You did not see a water moccasin in Connecticut. You did not see one in New York, in New Hampshire, in Maine, in, you know, Maryland, in all these states, you know, New Jersey, you didn't. Uh, chances are if the snake's in the water, it's some species of water snake. Yes, snakes can swim. Yes, venomous snakes can swim. They don't typically go into the water, at least for these species. Water moccasins obviously do, cottonmouths love the water, uh, but they do not live anywhere near here. So stop perpetuating that. The next time you're at dinner and your uncle says a cottonmouth or water moccasin chase them in Connecticut, you can call them a liar because that's what they are. Uh, and they don't chase people to begin with anyway, that's another lie, but they don't even live anywhere near here. So back to the Northern Water Snake. Um, they're found in and around water and wetlands. There's, they're, they live in a small area per animal, a small territory. So they'll often be in about 400 feet of river or pond or whatever. And that stretch is really all they live in and they stay in that area. Uh, typically they're pretty shy and want to get out of your way. Occasional 
individuals will be a little more bold and will actually come up and check out the activity in the water of what you're doing. Give them a wide berth, they'll go on their way, just like every other species. Um, they'll feed anytime, uh, but more during the day when it's too cool at night. So they're a little bit opposite than the other animals that are trying to avoid the heat and doing it at night. They like it a little bit warmer when they're hunting, uh, especially being a water species. Obviously, the water temperature with high specific heat is a little bit different than the air temperature. Uh, they primarily eat fish, frogs, toads, and will at times take mice. They're a heavy bodied animal, very, very narrow head, only slightly larger than the neck. So that's that big difference between your copperheads, which have a much more broad head. These are much more narrow, very, very different head to neck. Uh, so really impossible to get these snakes confused, though people still do it. Uh, and usually it's because of lack of knowledge or fear. So don't be afraid. Uh, these are really, really cool animals. Um, and, uh, you know, any water source in Connecticut, you can be lucky enough to find them, uh, you know, be it ponds, lakes, rivers, you know, wetlands, uh, cool, cool snakes. Next up, we have the common ribbon snake, uh, which a lot of times gets confused for the garter snake. They do look similar, especially to the untrained eye. Um, they're the slimmest and thinnest member of its genus. Very, very narrow snakes, hence the ribbon. Uh, declining numbers and habitat here uh, go hand in hand. Their habitat's getting destroyed, their numbers are declining, not so good. They're found southern New England to mid-Georgia. Um, they're found in and near Connecticut wetlands, and they're often confused with common garters, as I said. 20 to 32 inches in size. Two spots on their head can help you identify them. They actually prefer to be in shallow water habitat, so that's often where you're going to find them. They eat frogs, toads, salamanders, and tadpoles. They'll also eat fish. Uh, they can be dormant in the summer if the habitat dries up, and they tend to be most active in spring, so that's your best chance to see this species. Uh, and they're usually a, healthy, a sign of a healthy ecosystem. If there's a lot of ribbon snakes somewhere, it's usually a sign that wetland's doing really, really well. Uh, so cool snake to see because it means the ecosystem is thriving. Totally harmless. They've got the stripes kind of like the garters do. Uh, a little bit smoother of a snake. Uh, you know, black head, white chin. Cool, cool animals. So earlier we talked about the fact that this snake can get confused sometimes with the eastern rat snake. And this is the black racer. Biggest difference, this snake is super, super silky smooth looking. Looks like water would just roll right off their back. The scales are not as keeled as they are on the black rat snake or eastern rat snake. Um, they're found all over North America, statewide here, but they're rare up in the northwest corner. Uh, 33 to 65 inches in size, solid black body, bluish hue to their belly, white chin. Once again, smooth, smooth scales, small heads. Uh, you know, the young animals look very different until they come into their darker adult colors. Uh, but they really don't look like much else, so you're not going to confuse them other than the fact you're probably not going to know it's a black racer unless you actually know something about snakes. Uh, they prefer areas that are mowed or cleared over dense cover. Uh, they just like to be able to kind of see around them. They're active hunters, and, and that, that aids in them because they're diurnal species, so they're out actively hunting during the day. This is a species, if you're in an area where they inhabit, you are likely to see at some point out and about moving around. Wants to get away from you like everything else. Uh, they eat other snakes, toads, frogs, birds, mammals. Uh, they will, um, so the, one of the funny things is, is their, their scientific name has basically constrictor in it, but they're not constrictors. They'll actually just pin down their prey and eat it alive uh, or, or pin it down and, and try to injure it and then eat it. So they don't constrict like you would see with some of the other species that, that work that way. Look like they're very fast snakes. Top speed is eight to 10 miles an hour, which is fast in the realm of our local species. But, uh, you know, outside of humans with issues, you could easily uh, outmaneuver this, this snake here. Very, very, very cool and underappreciated species.